Welcome back everyone, good to see you. I don't normally like launching from boat ramps, but I decided to do it today and uh, might have been a bad call because it is crazy busy here. And the reason I don't like boat ramps is uh, you gotta be super quick to get on and off the water. Um, and I generally like to try and stay out of the way of all these boaters. Okay, but that's not what we wanna talk about. We wanna talk about why you shouldn't be and Aaron Ralston. Let's go. Okay, welcome back. So who is Aaron Ralston and why don't you want to be him? I'm going to save that for the end of the video. In the meantime, let's get our gear in order and get on the water and then we're going to talk about today's sort of topic which is float plans and how simple those can be and how you can make them more complex and uh what i'm willing to give away for free right now let's get our gear and get on the water Since I got to the ramp and there was no one coming or going, I decided to take a minute and clean my very dirty boat off. The biggest downside, believe it or not, of my boat living on my van is right now it's parked under trees and it is just getting wickedly dirty. Uh, so I took a minute just to, to get it clean and, and uh, look a little bit prettier. So my gear loadout is pretty much the same for all of these day paddles that I'm doing, right? You've seen me pack my boat a million times. Um, PFD, spray skirt, all the stuff that's in my PFD stays in my PFD. Bilge pump, paddle float, short toe. If I have students, I have a long toe. And then in a dry bag, sunscreen, camera stuff, water, my phone. Um, pretty standard array of stuff. And as I said, you've seen me pack that stuff uh, all the time. Uh, really doesn't change for these one day or you know even just an hour or so little day paddles. Um, but there's other stuff that's happening that you're not seeing, and that's what I want to talk about. So I am just past high tide, and I've got the wind in my face. That might change because I'm going to do a bit of this getting out of here. But at the moment, the wind is in my face, and the tide is going out. So the tide is pulling me, and the wind is pushing me. Um, tide is going this way, wind is coming this way, if that wasn't clear. And... Um, that can make for bumpy water. And so it's something to be thinking about as you're paddling is what's the water doing and what's the wind doing? And we're gonna have a whole video on tides and currents and, and things like that. Uh, but that's down the road a bit. Today, because boat traffic is so high, I should point out it's uh, Labor Day weekend and a Saturday, and so I knew boat traffic was gonna be high. Um, I packed my VHF in my PFD. Frequently when I paddle here in Norfolk, um, it's in my dry bag. And uh, I wanted it a little bit closer to me today just because I suspect traffic is gonna be high. 
uh, it's not too bad right now, but as there were a lot of boats there, um, and so it's not inconceivable. Um, and when I start seeing boat traffic, I'll turn it on on the 16th. Speak of the devil. Yeah, so I'm really just past the inlet that I came out of. This is still technically a river heading out to the Chesapeake uh, and already a fair amount of boat traffic. So I'm gonna do my best to stay out of their way, stay close to shore. Um, I'm gonna have to do a couple of channel crossings, but I'll do them pretty quickly. Um, so it's a good day to keep your head on a swivel because those folks are not gonna see me. Okay, so if you've been following me for a while, you know that sort of my MO is getting people active in the outdoors, having adventures, and doing it safely. Um, I put a big priority on safety, which is why when I see paddlers doing things that are inherently unsafe, it really upsets me. I haven't figured out a good way to talk to people, like saying, hey, you realize you're doing something really unsafe? Uh, and have it be uh, received well. <laughs> so I don't do that, but boy, do I wish I could. Um, and the thing is that as people in the outdoors risk management decisions are made based on past experience. So if you have no past experience, it's, you're making decisions with no information. And so it seems like you're making a good call, but you're really not making a good call. And so I un totally understand that. Um, but there needs to be a way to help people understand risk a little bit better. Um, and so a big part of that stuff is um, thinking about what the gear you're packing and my VHF, the first aid kit, stuff like that, even on a simple day paddle. Um, but the other part of that is letting someone know where you are. Make sure this is clear, no boats coming. Uh, letting people know where you are and when you'll be back. And this is true for anyone in the outdoors, not just paddlers. Though in the paddling world, in the paddling world, we use a thing called a float plan, which I'll talk about in a little bit. An easy way for you to make that happen in terms of saying to someone, hey, here's where I'm going paddling, here's when I'll be off the water. It could be as simple as what my daughter does when she goes backpacking. She sends me a text message before she gets on the trail, usually includes, includes a photo of the map, the area they're going to be, and when she'll be off the trail. Uh, and it's really that simple. And then I will say, invariably, she forgets to tell me when she gets off the trail. So Sunday night at 10 o'clock, when she's been off the trail for a few hours, I send her a text. Um, the other thing I would say is that if she did that and um, I didn't hear from her and wasn't able to reach her, I would probably start emergency action the following morning. Um, evacuations generally don't start in the dark. So uh, that's a super simple way to make that happen. And so today, my wife was already out. I sent her a text, hey, I'm going paddling. This is where I put in. I'll be off the water in an hour or two. Super simple, super easy. That level of information that you give to someone can change based on the risk that you're undertaking, right? So for me, little day trip, won't even be in the ocean today, not a whole lot of risk. My biggest danger really is boats running over me. Let's, yeah, there's a boat, so we're gonna paddle a little closer and angle a little bit more towards shore. He will hopefully go behind me. Um, so we can increase the amount of information based on what we're doing and how much risk we're exposing ourselves to. And, yep, he'll pass behind me. And that can increase and increase and increase. Instead of it being a text message, instead of it being a text message, maybe it's an email to a friend. Hey, I'm going away for three days. Here's where I'm paddling. Here's where I'm backpacking. Here's an overview of my route. If there's a problem, call these park rangers, right? So that's sort of level two as I think about it. Yeah, it would suck to get run over by a pontoon boat. I'm gonna get hit by a boat, at least make it something cool. Okay, so that's level two. I love that uh, Norfolk is the mermaid city. And everywhere you go, 
there are mermaids everywhere, like public, private, like this is just someone's house. They have a mermaid. Stores will have mermaids and then parks will have mermaids. It's super cool. I like that it's the mermaid city. And then level three is a full-blown float plan. So, float, which really should be an acronym, but it isn't, um, is a form that you fill out and give to someone. When I paddled the Inside Passage, I looked for a float, a float plan form that I liked and couldn't really find one that I liked. And so, what did I do? I made my own. Um, it looks like this and it's two-sided, and it's got tons of information. But it starts off with, this is where I'm going. If I'm not off the water by this date and this time, call this phone number, it's these people. So in that case, it was a phone number to Coast Guard in Alaska and Southeast Alaska, and then they could start looking for us. But now here I have to be a little bit more aware of boats in both directions. This is the most dangerous thing I will do all day. No boats here at the moment, but one could come around this corner. Yep, there's one right there. I was going to say at 30 miles an hour. I'm going to let him catch up and cut right behind him. Doesn't slow down, doesn't alter course, could have easily cut behind me. I mean, it's fine, it's just poor seamanship and a little rude. And so the float plan has tons of information on it. What color your boat is, what color your tents are, the route you're doing, a little blurb about each person. This is their medical history, you know, important medical stuff. This is their medical training. This is the kinds of communication devices we have and signaling devices we have, all sorts of stuff like that. And so what I'm gonna do is make that available to you guys. And there are two ways you can get it. If you just email me, brett at adventureotaku.com, I will send you a PDF file of the float plan. If you want to help support this channel, you can go to coffee, link down below, and give me $4 for a cup of coffee, and in the message say, hey, I'd love a copy of the float plan, email it here. So you can totally get it for free if you want it for free. Um, if you want to help out me and the channel, you can get it for four bucks or more if you want to. I never found a float plan that I really liked. I really like this one, uh, and I just want to make it available to folks. And in case you were wondering, like, who has the right of way in a situation like that, it's me as a human-powered craft. I have the right of way. Um, but there's also something called the rule of tonnage, uh, which is he outweighs me, so he has the right of way. Normally, you apply that to, like, barges and stuff because they can't stop. He could easily have stopped. He could have easily just gone behind me and wasn't interested. So... Yeah, I gave him the right of way, even though I had it. Okay, so, who is Aaron Ralston? Aaron Ralston is the guy who was hiking alone in a canyon in Utah. I want to say it was Blue John Canyon. And he dislodged a boulder which fell on him and trapped his hand. And the only way he could get out was by cutting his own hand off. And the reason that was his only way was because he didn't tell anyone where he was going. No one knew. And so that is the punchline. Don't be Aaron Ralston. He didn't tell anyone where he was going. He didn't have an e perp or an in-reach or anything like that. He just went for a hike. Didn't tell anyone. Don't be Aaron Ralston. He wrote a really good book, though. I think it's called 127 Hours. Really good book. Check it out. Okay, that's our paddle for today. 
So float plans, if you want one, email me, bread at adventureotaku.com. If you really want to support the channel, head over to Coffee. There's a link down below. Send me four bucks and your name and email address, uh, and I'll send you off there. And that's just a super way to help support the channel. Otherwise, I'll see you outside. Rope got me stuck. <laughs>